There isn't a single person left in the town of Ogden Marsh in Iowa as every corner is burning under heavy flames in the middle of the night. This all started two days earlier. The locals are enjoying a high school baseball game, which suddenly stops when everyone notices Rory entering the pitch with a shotgun in his hands and looking spaced out. Deputy Russell evacuates the pitch while Sheriff David approaches Rory and, thinking he's drunk, he tries to gently make him drop the weapon. However Rory is about to shoot his shotgun instead, so David reacts on instinct and shoots first, killing him. In the evening, David meets with Rory's wife Peggy and his son Kurt and apologizes to them, explaining Rory had been drunk so he had no choice. However Peggy doesn't believe him and slaps him, saying that Rory had been clean for years. The guilt doesn't let David sleep, but his pregnant wife Judy tells him he did the right thing. The next day, David gets a call from the lab and is surprised to learn that there was no alcohol in Rory's blood tests, which were done twice. Confused and upset, David visits the pitch and finds school principal Ben sitting and staring at nothing, kinda looking like Rory. David has to call his name a couple of times to snap him out of it and chit-chat a bit. Meanwhile in hospital, Deirdre brings her husband Bill to see Dr. Judy. Bill swears he's just tired and it's nothing serious, he also looks a bit spaced out. When Judy asks him a different question, he just repeats the same answer. In the evening, Deirdre hears a noise in the garage and rushes to check it out, finding the tractor machine on but no Bill in sight. After turning it off, Deirdre hears her son screaming, so she runs back to the house to look for him. She worries when she sees his room empty, but the child finds her and tells her to be silent. They move to hide in the wardrobe as the kid mentions that Bill has a knife. At that moment they hear Bill taking the stairs so they try to be quiet, but unfortunately Bill finds them anyway and immediately locks the door. Ignoring his family's desperate yelling, Bill proceeds to pour gasoline all over the house and sets it on fire. By the time the cops and the firemen make it to the house, it's too late, Deirdre and the kid are dead. Apparently Bill was just mowing the lawn while his house burned, and when a furious Judy yells at him for what he did, Bill just whistles. Later he's taken to the police station to wait for his transfer and he just stands there in his cell, staring at nothing. Outside of town, three hunters are going down the bog when they're surprised to find a parachute stuck in some trees. When they pull the end out of the water, they yell as they discover the body of an army pilot. Soon the police come to check it out and Russell remembers hearing a rumor of a plane crashing in the bog, which at the time sounded like a big lie because that's too big to go unnoticed. David and Russell decide to take a boat to the bog and are shocked to discover there's a plane underwater. In the sky, some sort of drone camera zooms in on the town with the words initiate containment protocol. With a theory in mind, David researches where the town's water supply comes from and confirms is from that bog, and the first house it reaches its Rory's. An army plane crashing into a river without coverage from the news is very suspicious, so David thinks the plane is contaminating the water and making people sick. He and Russell visit the mayor to ask him to shut down the water supply, but the mayor refuses because shutting the water down will kill the crops and bankrupt their whole town. Worried about the safety of his loved ones, David decides to ignore direct orders and goes to shut the water supply down himself, even removing the valve so nobody can turn it back on. When they return to the station, they're disturbed to find Bill bleeding on the floor of his cell. They wonder if he's dead, but when they come closer, Bill wakes up and tries to attack them while looking a bit zombie-like. David realizes Bill should have already been picked up by now, but when he tries to contact his higher-ups, he discovers the phone lines aren't working and there's no internet. Then David goes outside only to find that the town is completely deserted except for a woman passing by on a child's bicycle. At that moment a mysterious black car takes pictures of him but when David tries to approach it, the car quickly drives away. Next David goes to the morgue and when he checks the first body he finds, he discovers it is stitched mouth and eyes. A noise coming from another table indicates that body is still alive and when David checks on him, he finds the face also stitched. David tries to cut out the thread and the man gives him a warning right before the medical examiner hits David from behind. It seems this guy is infected too and a fight ensues as he tries to kill David with a bone cutter, hurting him on the shoulder. David pulls at the cable to make the cutter hurt the examiner instead, eventually killing him. However the cutter begins bouncing on the floor and coming after David, but he's saved just in time by Russell. Afterward David goes home and tries to convince his wife to escape to her parents' house, but Judy refuses in emergencies the town needs a doctor. Suddenly Judy sees somebody outside their house and David goes out to check the barn, only to be arrested by the military. They drag him onto a bus where he finds lots of kidnapped locals, including Judy and Russell. The bus takes them to a military camp they've set up at the local school, where people are being kept behind fences. The group is taken through some tents to be scanned for radioactivity and body temperature, and everyone with bad results is separated from the families even if it's just children. Unfortunately Judy's temperature is high and the soldiers take her away, causing David to fight against their captors. However he's easily overpowered and knocked out. Judy is tied to a stretcher and taken inside, where she sees lots of soldiers in masks, locals suffering, and blood stains. She can't help screaming when they come to sedate her. When she wakes up, she finds herself in a room with dozens of people tied to stretchers and hears violent noises outside. It seems a car has crashed against the camp fences and people are taking the chance to run away. 
As the soldiers try to stop them, a violent riot ensues and the infected people breach the containment area. Unable to control such a mess, the soldiers and the doctors escape in helicopters, leaving the patients tied to the stretchers. Meanwhile David wakes up inside a truck that has taken him to another camp, where everyone's given a bracelet that marks them as not infected. Apparently all the healthy people will be transferred away, but David refuses to leave without Judy. A neighbor tells him the town has been closed off and that the roadblocks on every highway have shot down entire families that tried to escape, but David calls him a coward. Moments later, David makes it back to the police station and finds Bill dead on the floor. He finds his gun and points it when he hears a noise, but it's just Russell. Both of them immediately hide when they hear the black car drive by outside and David explains Judy only has a fever because she's pregnant, so Russell accepts to help him rescue him. Back to Judy, she realizes her friend Becca is on a stretcher near her. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by a weird noise and a shadow moves around to reveal Ben, who is covered in blood and carrying a farming fork. Clearly infected, he starts moving around the room and killing patients with the fork without mercy. Eventually he approaches Becca, but before he can stab her Judy screams to distract him. Then Ben makes his way towards her and raises the fork, only to get shot by David and Russell. The guys rescue Judy and Becca and go outside, where they find a complete massacre as a consequence of the riot. Then the group begins crossing the town, finding everything destroyed and in flames. They also see a crazy person punching a car but luckily they aren't noticed. As they look for a working car, they suddenly hear a noise and hide behind a truck. It turns out the hunters are chasing people and shooting them before throwing the bodies in the back of their truck. Luckily they soon drive away and the group can keep going. Eventually they walk near the house belonging to Becca's boyfriend, so she rushes to look for him. Scotty receives them with his weapon out, but when David aims his own gun at him, Scotty apologizes and says he only wanted to be sure. He explains his mother is also okay and she's gathering supplies, but they're interrupted when they see people come closer. The group hides in the barn and watches how a bunch of soldiers surround the house and drag the old lady out to run the test on her. Scotty can't stand it and ignoring David's warnings he runs out to rescue his mother, only for the soldiers to shoot them both and use a flamethrower to set the bodies on fire. The soldiers are given orders to sweep the area and one of them enters the barn, but David and Russell quickly capture him and take him to the back under threat. The very young soldier explains he doesn't know the details either, the squadron was just flown over under orders. He didn't sign up for the army to shoot civilians and swears that if they let him go, he won't tell anyone about them. David gives him a chance still under threat and the soldier goes outside, telling the others there's nobody here so they should go. The next morning, the group makes it to David's house. While Russell works on repairing an old car, the others gather supplies, and Judy decides to stop by the nursery to say goodbye, not noticing an infected Peggy behind her. Downstairs, David hears a noise and rushes to the nursery, only to find Judy tied to a chair. Suddenly an infected Kurt jumps on him to try to kill him, and when David tries to reach for his fallen gun, Peggy stabs his hand, getting it stuck on the floor. Then she grabs the gun and aims it at Judy, so to distract her, David reminds her he was the one who killed her husband. Peggy turns the gun toward him but David quickly disarms her and manages to free his hand to push Kurt away and stab Peggy, killing her. Then Kurt grabs the gun and almost kills David, but Russell kills him first by shooting through the window. Afterward, David frees Judy while Russell comes in to shoot the bodies a few extra times just in case. This leaves Judy disturbed and she worries he may be infected too, but David points out they owe him their lives. The group leaves in the car and after driving for a while, Becca starts coughing. Russell thinks she may be infected and soon everyone is arguing with each other. At that moment they notice a helicopter flying by, so to avoid being seen, David turns the car and hides inside a car wash. While they wait for the helicopter to leave, Becca sees someone outside and suddenly the platform begins moving as the washing machine is turned on. David tries to drive them out, but the car is being held by the platform. Soon a bunch of infected employees surround the vehicle and attack the group, breaking the windows to be able to reach inside. As David fights against one of them, another reaches for Becca so she smashes his head against the car and kicks him off. After lots of struggling, David also manages to push the other guy off and finally gets to advance the car, but another employee appears at the back of the car and puts a hose around Becca's neck, who gets dragged out and killed. David stops the car and while he and Russell kill the crazy guys, Judy runs to Becca, but it's too late. To make matters worse, the helicopter flies by and blows up their car. Afterward the remaining trio starts walking down the road and eventually finds Russell's truck, which was damaged by spikes. At that moment they see the mysterious black car approaching and David decides they should steal it, but Russell gets unnecessarily aggressive and throws the spikes on the road, causing the car to flip and crash. An agent crawls out of the car and Russell tries to shoot him, but David stops him and demands an explanation. The agent says that the plane had been transferring a prototype biological weapon designed to destabilize a population, but it crashed when it was going to Texas to be destroyed. The incubation period is 48 hours. A furious David punches the guy and announces he wants him to help, but Russell kills the man with a shot and David comes to terms with the fact his friend must be infected. 
David takes Russell's rifle away but Russell reveals he's also got a gun and points it at them, making them give him back his rifle before reminding them how many times he's saved their lives. Then Russell tells the couple to move, treating them as hostages. After walking for a while, Russell wastes all the rifle's bullets in the air and David tries to calm him down. When Russell lowers the gun, David punches him and takes the weapon, and as he looks at the sky, Russell finally admits he's not well. He asks to walk with them a little longer just to have their company during his last moments. Sometime later, the group finds the road to the highway blocked by the military. Russell says he can buy them some time, so David gives him the gun and Russell runs toward the soldiers to distract them. He tries using his gun but the soldiers shoot him down first, this is still enough time for David and Judy to sneak around and cross the town border. Eventually they make it to a truck stop where they're disturbed to find three loaded trucks that were supposed to evacuate the healthy people, however they're all dead. The bullet shells indicate this was the government's plan all along. Fortunately there's also a regular truck next available, so David starts gathering supplies for their escape. At that moment he finds an army radio and hears a communication saying something big will happen in 10 minutes. When he goes to the garage, he finds the hunter's truck with the bodies, meaning they must be around. Suddenly the power goes off in the building. Judy sees a shadow so she immediately hides and grabs a knife, but when the hunters find her anyway, she starts running away and hides in a room where she finds even more bodies. When a hunter comes to check this room, Judy swallows her disgust and hides among the bodies, so the hunter doesn't see her and walks away. Judy approaches the door and almost screams when someone touches her, but luckily it's just David. Then the couple runs to the truck and when they open the door, a body falls out. They get into the vehicle but none of the keys David took from the office work, so he has to check the fallen body to find another set. He manages to find them but before he can move, a hunter grabs his leg and drags him into a fight. The second hunter tries to enter the truck, but Judy immediately kills him with a shot. After exchanging a few hits, David manages to cover the hunter with oil and sets him on fire with his lighter, rolling away not to be reached by the flames too. Afterward the couple leaves in the truck, and since David brought the military radio with him, they listen to a countdown that soon reaches zero. Suddenly they hear an explosion and as a very bright light illuminates the whole area, they realize the military has blown up their town. The bomb sends such a blast wave that it reaches the truck and sends it flying off the road. Luckily they both survive, so they hold hands as they watch their beloved hometown fall into ruins. Then the couple begins making their way to the nearest city, unaware that the drone camera is onto them and displays the words initiate containment protocol. Meanwhile newscasts all over the country report that the town was taken over by a normal fire that couldn't be stopped because of the wind, and that the explosion some people saw was a petrol chemical plant having an accident. There's a reporter on site, but an infected person suddenly interrupts the transmission. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.